And just like so many other YouTube influencers, we're going to start this video with how's it going guys, but really welcome back to another episode of Roadside Reviews where today, surprise, we're taking a look at another Kia, the Kia Seltos, the 2021 model. And what does Seltos mean? I didn't have enough time to Google it. Maybe you should do it yourself. Be a little bit more interactive instead of me explaining everything to you. Like people say, it's some sort of mythical god of power and elegance, but I'm probably wrong. That's for you to be able to decide. But this is the 2021 Kia Seltos. This is the EX all-wheel drive model. So in typical roadside review fashion, we have the most fully loaded version we could be able to get our hands on. Now, this is kind of the buffer between the Kia Soul and the Sportage. So still giving you a little bit of a larger SUV with some of the smaller car-like amenities such as fuel mileage and maintenance and of course overall cost, which really brings this car into a different segment that doesn't have a lot of competitors with, but then really fits a, a very fine niche of clientele that can be able to appreciate having the fuel-like car, the fuel-like mileage of a car, the utility of an SUV, especially if you live in like an urban area like downtown or you know somewhere out in the suburbs. But the very first thing you're going to take a look at with this vehicle is there is really nothing else out on the market that looks like it. Everything from the aggressive front end, the styling, the wraparound headlights. And one thing that's very characteristic of Kia is seeing that these beautiful LED lights that run all the way up almost halfway through the front fenders, giving it a very bold and aggressive look. Same style grille that you had previously seen on our Kia Stinger, where you'll see it had that nice long tiger shaped grille with the honeycomb, so it still has that good aggressive look to it. This one also does have the projector LED fog lamps down in the bottom, so it adds that nice styling look to it, but really helps enhance the directional light, so you know, you're putting it exactly where you need it, and then also looking good at the same time. Now, this vehicle does have the two liter inline four sonar engine with a stout 147 hertz purse. Very adequate to be able to get this vehicle going. Now, if you had seen some of our other vehicle uh, lineups we had, our other sister company, Hyundai, we did a review on the Hyundai Sonata Limited, which had the 1.6 liter turbocharged motor. That is also an option to be able to get with this one. A Little bit more power, a little bit more stout. Both of them do a great job as far as getting you around. Now, on to wheels and tires, yes. Everybody wants to be able to look good. Now, these are still have the five spoke machine finished front end for the aluminum alloy wheels with the darker inlay as you can tell that's really kind of the style right now that you're getting you know on a lot of these SUVs and cars you know you still have a nice thick sidewall so it'll be able to give you a very comfortable ride especially since it is a little bit more of an SUV style platform to where it's not going to be like riding in a very rugged truck but it's going to be able to absorb a lot of the bumps and still give you a little bit of off-road quality too all season all weather tires you know it's it's meant to be able to go anywhere and especially being the all-wheel drive model doesn't matter if you're in San Antonio or if you're going up to Colorado, you're pretty much prepared. Along the sides too, paint to match mirrors, paint to match door handles. One really unique feature that I just noticed on this car a little while ago is these roof rails. Two tones, so you have this nice silver finish with this matte black underneath, but you can see it kind of drags along and has this little hook on the end. I like that. Kind of reminds me of like the old Cadillac tail fins. It's a little bit of a sporty look, aerodynamics to it, probably. But you know, it's just something you don't see on a lot of other SUVs. And you know, really this is honestly the first time I've seen it on any of the compact ones as well. Aggressive body lines that start all the way up from the front of your headlights that we talked about before, all the way running into the actual shape of the tail lights. So you can see one seamless transition, wrap around tail lights, once again about being seen, but also giving that good styling cue to it as well. Then getting to the back, nice aggressive rear end as well so matching the styling from the front to the rear sides top to bottom now you do have the wraparound taillights like we talked about with this chrome strip that goes from both sides of it large key emblem in the back very indicative ex model so everybody knows that you're driving top of the line and then i think it's kind of cool which you don't see on a lot of the suvs now is instead of having the paint to match lower bumper you have this matte finish with the same silver trim that we saw on the roof rails I think it adds a nice little bit of a rugged look and a touch to it. So if it gets a little bumped up, a little scraped up, you're not going to see as much damage, but also knowing it's a little bit more utilitarian. Now, if we go into the rear, just like you'd expect, cargo space, but lots of it. So 
not to sound repetitive, if you're going on a road trip or got a lot of groceries or hauling around potted plants, you got space for things. This is a 60-40 split folding rear seat, so you can be able to fold down one side or the other or both at the same time. And they do fold flat completely. So if you do have something a little bit of a larger item, you can be able to have it go all the way up to the front driver and passenger seats, all the way to the rear tailgate, maximizing your amount of storage space. But when you take a look at it, it's a very low platform as far as how high you'd have to be able to reach into the tailgate. So if you are lifting heavier items, strollers, potted plants, you're not having to lift up and over a hump. You can see it's just a nice flat surface that easily transitions into the cargo area. Something that's appreciated, just like I said, especially if it's a, a, a heavier item. You know, maybe you're getting a new TV or surround sound system, you gotta lift a big subwoofer into the back. Easy to be able to do. But notice also how wide it is. It almost extends out complete to the sides of the cargo area. The reason why I say that is, let's say you do have a stroller. You do have, you know, a little bit of a wider uh, object. You don't have to be able to lift it in, up and over, and then down. Slides in seamlessly. Just makes life a little bit easier. Things you may not notice right now, but if you're to trade this vehicle in, then have one that doesn't have it. Something that you definitely appreciate that you had on your current car. Very solid. Love it. Fuel door is on the driver's side, so pulling up to the gas pump, it's very easy to be able to get to. Once again, so there's no second guessing. Don't have to be able to rely on that needle on the dashboard telling you which side it's on. And this car also does have the keyless entry go system that we've talked about on almost every of our other vehicles that we've had. Lock, unlock, panic button, and auto start. Pretty standard stuff from what you've seen before. Let that American Airlines Flight 1338 get by into San Antonio International Airport. Bonus points if you figured out where we're recording yet. We'll figure out a prize later on. I don't know what it's gonna be, but it'll probably be pretty disappointing, but maybe we'll think of something. Now, into the interior. Very retro, very cool, very modern. It's a lot of things inside this vehicle that kind of bring back the older designs, the youthful, that you kind of expect with people who are buying this car. You know, very elegant, very nice. You know, everything's laid out very well, very easy to be able to use, but there's not a lot of other cars out there that are gonna have kind of the same setup. And it's something that you can really appreciate. You know, driver's door, window controls, mirror controls, window locks, storage compartments down there on the bottom, nice soft touch uh, materials through and through. Once again, very comfortable, very well made craftsmanship. You know, it's going to hold up over the test of time. You do have an eight-way power driver seat with lumbar support as well. So if you've got a little bit of a weaker back or going on longer road trips, be able to get that support that you need as well. Tons of space inside of it too for the driver. Like I said, me being on the larger side, I actually can be able to have the seat positioned where I need it. And it's not even all the way into the back position yet. So if you are a NBA player or just somebody of above average height, yes, you can still fit into this vehicle with space to spare. Now, let's take a look at the inside. Uh, with the dad grunt, because I am a dad. Now, interior, pretty standard, but far from normal, I guess is the best way to be able to put it. Push button start ignition, very typical, especially of cars of this trim level. So you get inside and take a look at the vehicle. Gonna go ahead and close this door up here. So I have a whole bunch of chimes going on. Very easy to be able to look at. Everything's laid out very well. You know, everything's very easy to be able to see and be able to get to. Once again, visibility is great with the way that the windshield is sloped out and these, of course, the designs and the A-pillars, pretty slim. Gauge cluster, not gonna bore you with a lot, but you know, you have your RPM, speedometer, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, all your simple stuff. You have a smaller screen on the interior that'll be able to show you your, uh, your trip computer, go through all your different safety features as far as turning on and off some of those nanny state things. So if you're not a big fan of the, the lane uh, departure warning, you can be able to turn that on or off. Same thing with blind spot monitoring, just on like a lot of the other Kias that we've seen. Steering wheel, nice leather wrapped steering wheel. Cool thing about this from other cars we haven't really seen is this nice piano black finish on top of it really kind of adds a nice little design cue which matches all that you see along the trim of the doors and also dashboard and following into the shifter. Bluetooth controls, stereo controls on one side, cruise controls, and of course all your other uh, menus for the screen on the dashboard control from uh, the right side. 
windshield wipers, blinkers, and headlamps, pretty typical. Now with this model being the EX, you do have a sunroof. You have a little manual sliding one uh, for the sun cover. Pretty snappy, moves pretty quick, not too bad. Average size, nothing really to write home about, but still a nice feature to be able to have when weather permits it. It does also vent out, which is a cool feature. So in these 110 degree days that we get nine months out of the year, you can still be able to vent for the hotter air to be able to escape. So when you're getting into your car, it's not gonna be as hot. And then the uh, auto alarm to be able to start it, to cool down the car, it doesn't have to be able to work as hard. Once again, map lights, and of course the controls for all your interior lights, still wrapped in that nice black piano finish here. Typical rear view mirror. I like the design of it. This is pretty cool to where they have the wider top, but then of course it tapers down a little bit at the bottom. And really that's just be able to keep unnecessary things you know, like the side of someone's face from being in the view of, uh, you know, what you're looking at, which, you know, isn't really too much of a bad thing for the driver, but still enhances the visibility, but then also giving you a little bit more space to be able to look out from there. The larger infotainment screen that you're going to see for the Seltos is going to have everything from your radio controls, media, all your uh, seeking controls for your, uh, you know, radio stations, or if you're listening to your iPod or through your uh, Apple CarPlay. Everything's gonna be controlled with actual buttons. Once again, something I'm a very big fan of, and actual knobs. So of course your power and volume, tune and enter from there. Now with a lot of these vehicles, you see that they either don't have navigation systems that come with them, and back you know, 15 years ago, that was the biggest rage. It's gotta have navigation. But with the use of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and being able to use like the Siri hands-free, some of those items are just kind of obsolete at this point in time. So I think it's a really cool jump that they actually adopted these in lieu of having to put in an actual navigation system into uh, the cars. Now when you go through all of your menus, everything from your presets, phone connectivity, or any media interfaces, all going to be controlled from there. AC vents, of course, four up into the front. This does have an auto climate control system, but it is only one temperature selected. So you and your passengers will have to exercise what they call compromise. So pick a temperature and stick with it. Everything from your temperature control, just by simply twisting the knob, hitting your auto, we'll turn it on. Now you have three stages of auto, so your low auto, high, and then mid. So it's just going to adjust the fan speed and how aggressive it wants to be able to come out. If it's hotter than Hades outside and you wanna get in and cool down as quickly as possible, turn it on a high, it'll take care of everything from there. Once it gets comfortable, just switch it on down or just take over manual controls yourself. And everything else for like your rear defroster, front defroster, where the air is going, all your buttons can be located right underneath. Very easy to be able to understand, very easy to get to, very easy digital display to be able to read out as well. Now this one does also have the heated exterior mirrors along with the uh, side vents for the defroster. So once the defroster comes on, we have seen actually a lot right now in the month of November where we're getting a lot of foggy windows. Not only will it take care of your windshield side uh, windows, but also your mirrors too, which is really going to be able to help enhance visibility and not relying on all the other technologies such as blind spot monitoring to see what's on the side of you. Coming down here to your column shifter, nice SUV style, kind of a bigger, manlier shifter as you would be able to take a look at it. It's not a rotary knob or anything like that. You do have your park reverse, neutral, drive. You do have a sport mode, so if you shift it over one side, this transmission is then going to react more like a sport transmission like we've seen on some of the previous vehicles to where it's going to want to act like it's holding a gear a little bit longer, stay in a little bit of a higher rev range, not giving the illusion of being a little bit more sporty, but still giving you a little bit more power on tap when needed. Now with that too, you also have your drive mode selector, which is going to be located right to the left of that. So three different modes you can go to. One being normal. Car is going to drive with the factory presets, giving you the smoothest ride and also the best fuel economy. You have a smart mode, which is then going to react to the external environments as far as you know if the vehicle is going up a hill, whether you're going around corners, stop and go traffic or what speeds, and then it's going to react also to how the driver inputs are going so if you're you know racing in between stoplights or if you're accelerating a little bit harder it then can adjust the throttle sensitivity the engine rpms and the shift points of the transmission to be able to react to that and then full-on sport mode 
Sport mode is just going to give you all the fun stuff at once without having to be able to do any thinking between that, which is a really cool feature to have. Do you have heated front seats, which are the three stages? No surprise, all the Kias do that as well. Now this being the all-wheel drive model, you have power sent to all four wheels, which is also torque vectoring, so depending on which wheel is losing traction, it can be able to adjust uh, how much power that wheel is getting, and then if it's losing traction, put power to a wheel that has more, so you can be able to maintain that forward movement and also control. This lock button right here will lock to make sure that the front and rear get equal 50-50 amount of power. Now why would you need that if it's an all-wheel drive? Well, to keep up with fuel economy, Vehicles with front wheel drive typically have better fuel economy. So once you start this vehicle off, it's gonna start on like a 60-40 split. As you start to accelerate, taking more power away from the rear wheels, giving it back to the front to enhance fuel economy. Now let's say you're in low traction conditions, you're up in Colorado or somewhere where it's icy and snowy and you wanna be able to make sure that no matter what, you're getting the most amount of traction, you can be able to lock that. Or if you're just in South Texas and you're going down a dirt road and wanna have a little bit more control, you can be able to lock that in, no worries from there. Now let's take a look at the seating surfaces. Looks like leather, right? It's not, it's called Sofino, it's that pleather, that leather red. It gives the feeling of leather without the wear and tear and of course the heat that comes along with it. Much easier to be able to take care of. There's no conditioning that you have to do to it, no special care items to it. It still has the same leather touch, still has the same perforated surface, so it'll be able to help wick away any extra heat, especially during the summertime but it's gonna be able to last a lot longer, especially if you have dogs running across the seats with nails, you don't want them scratched up, or if you have kids in the back, they're spilling things on it, just a damp towel, like a microfiber towel, be able to wipe it off, keep it very clean, extremely durable as well. Now you do have your 12 volt outlet, USB ports, and then also wireless charging located right up here into the front. Pretty typical of what you're seeing on all the Kias nowadays, which is you know, almost more standard equipment, not too bad. A mechanical parking brake. So instead of having the one that's sitting down here on the floor, I like this, kind of reminiscent of the older cars. Or if you want to do a little Tokyo drift through a parking lot, be able to yank that up real quick. Two cup holders located up at the front. You still have your bottle holders right here in both of the doors. And a pretty decent sized center console. Not the biggest thing in the world. You can't be able to hide like a laptop computer in there, but still any kind of storage that you need or loose items you don't want laying around, still be able to hold it inside there. Now the one last thing for the all-wheel drive that this vehicle does come equipped with, which is going to help out, especially if you are taking it uh, moderate off-road or even let's say that you're coming down like the Pikes Peak run. Very steep incline grades, you don't want to be riding your brakes. You have a hill descent control, which they call downhill brake control, and what that's going to do is adjust the engine RPMs with the transmission and also the brakes to be able to keep this vehicle going at a constant speed. So if you're noticing that you're coming down a very steep grade, it works at lower uh, speeds, you know, five, six, seven miles per hour to where it's going to be able to keep it at a steady speed. You're not having to manipulate the brakes. It's going to help reduce brake fade as well. But really, it's all about off-road control. So even though it is still kind of the crossover SUV, it doesn't have a lot of, you know, uh, the bigger, beefier things you'd see on other four by four or larger platform SUVs. It still has a lot of the electronics to give you the control and off-road abilities, which is nice. And you know, that kind of sums it up for the front. Very typical, very standard, but I mean very different in the design. Like I said, they've done a really good job with that. Something I haven't seen in really any vehicle so far since we started doing the reviews. So let's hop in the back and take a look there. Ugh, another dad grunt. It's one of those typical days. <sighs> Hate to be able to sound like a broken record, but big guy test, 6'3". This is with the seat all the way back and legroom headroom to spare. Even with the sunroof too, what we talked about before, that you lose a little bit of headroom with the sunroof, but the way that they designed it with the headliner, you have this nice indention up here too, so you're not sacrificing that space for rear room, rear room passengers by having that sunroof up in the front. Very supportive seats, very comfortable seats. It's a little bit tighter than what you'd see in some of the larger SUVs, but you're getting more the compact style, so that's to be expected. The one thing I do like is you don't have just the perforation in the front, then just a flat surface in the back. You still have that perforated seat covers that follow through into the rear, which is you no know, nice for the style and design too, but also for comfort for the rear passengers. It's typical cup holder, inner center armrest. Sitting back here, very comfortable. I like, like I said, the black P90 
piano trim that's going to run along the doors. Same soft touch materials we had in the front doors are going to be into the rear. So you don't lose any of the creature comforts that you had in the front. The rear passenger is going to have that as well. And a big thing when you start talking into SUVs as opposed to other smaller cars is going to be airflow and ventilation. So you want to be able to draw air from the front to the rear as efficiently as possible to be able to cool down the vehicle as quickly as possible. By having the rear air vents in the back too, it's going to be a major help. Now you can see you got a pretty good gap between the front two seats, which is going to be able to allow a lot of airflow, but this is going to help out substantially since you have a larger cargo area in the back that you do have to be able to cool down to be able to bring that temperature down or up depending on where you have it set. Another USB outlet, so you'll be able to charge a smartphone or a tablet, and then a cool little storage area down here, so if you want to be able to put a cell phone or a smaller tablet inside there, you can be able to store or keep it out of the way, and of course more storage compartments on the back of the passenger seat. Overall, very comfortable, spacious. I wouldn't put three of me back here. Two of me fit very fine. Three kids would fit just fine without you know yelling and touching that someone's taking up all their space. You know, it's a very comfortable rear seat and like I said, very spacious, very surprising for a vehicle this size. Guys, in closing, I think the Seltos is a really unique SUV that's kind of fit in the small niche that we talked about. If you want something a little bit larger than let's say, you know, a Kia Soul or the super subcompact SUVs and cars and don't want to really go up to the size of let's say a Sportage or a Sorento, this is going to be a really great option because it still gives you the space, utility, but it's also going to give you the fuel mileage and maintenance that you'd expect in a smaller car. So it's going to hit almost every area I think that a lot of people are looking for, especially if you're not going to be doing a lot of off-roading or hauling a lot of heavy stuff, but a good safe daily driver that looks sharp, has tons of safety features that go along with it and then just really unique design and styling as well. Like I said, this isn't gonna be anything you're gonna mistake out in a parking lot. You know, you're not gonna think, oh, is this something else? And you're gonna be able to tell what it is right off the bat and in a good way too. But as always, if you like our videos, make sure that you hit that subscribe button too. Hit that little bell on the side so you get notifications anytime that we come out with a new video, which seems to be a lot more often now since this is becoming now one of my more full-time jobs. Uh, if you have any comments or questions too, make sure that you leave them down there in the comment box. The best way to kind of figure out everything we've talked about so far is coming out and test driving one for yourself. Trust me, you won't be disappointed at all. Once again, my name is John Siebers. This is Roadside Reviews and look forward to seeing you on the next one.